We're diving deep into something I think a lot of people can relate to. Estate litigation. Yeah. We're talking wills, inheritances. Right. Those family disputes that make you wish you could just skip Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, yeah. We are unpacking a recent case out of Ontario. Ingram v. Kulinich. Okay. And this one is interesting because it really throws a curveball when it comes to how much time you've got to sort these things out. It's wild how often inheritances, which seem like they should be straightforward, end up being anything but right. Right. You layer in family dynamics, maybe a couple long-held grudges, Yeah. and suddenly you've got a recipe for, for conflict that I think even the most well-written will can account for. Totally. And this case, yeah. this case is a doozy because it really throws a wrench in the system when it comes to deadlines and what the courts consider too late. Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty of Ingram v. Kulinich, okay. so let's take a step back for a second. Sure. What are some of the most common reasons that people actually end up in court yeah. battling it out over an estate? Right. I mean, it's not always just about, like, trying to get money, right? No, absolutely not. Money can be a factor for sure. Yeah. But you've got family businesses, you've got maybe a treasured heirloom that's been passed down for generations. Yeah. Now you've even got things like digital assets, cryptocurrency. Oh, we're just, All of yeah. those things can become points of contention. Okay. Sometimes the deceased person's wishes aren't super clear in the will. Right. Sometimes a family member feels that they were intentionally written out. Right. And you know, emotions run high in these situations. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the law doesn't always offer easy answers. Yeah. And what happens in a situation yeah. where, you know, somebody feels like, you know, uh, my grandmother, she wasn't she wasn't all there when she signed that will. Right. Like, are those, is that a thing? Oh, absolutely. That's a very classic example of what we call a will contest. Okay. That's where someone challenges the validity of the will itself. Okay. But you can also have disputes that erupt over how the estate is being handled. Okay. Maybe there are suspicions that the executor is dragging their feet, that they're not acting in everyone's best interest. Oh, wow. Okay. Or maybe it's even just about how the will is interpreted. Okay. Maybe there's some vague wording in there that sends everyone into a tizzy trying to figure out what it means. So there are a lot of ingredients that can turn an already kind of sad situation into this legal free-for-all. Oh, that's right. But this case, Ingram v. Kulinich, yeah. it seems like this one, especially when it comes to the timing of it all, throws a real wrench into the system. It really does. So let's dive into that. Okay. What's the backstory here? So we've got Kathleen Ingram and the estate of Henry Kulinich. Okay. They were in a common law relationship for almost 20 years, sharing a life, yeah. supporting each other, the whole nine yards. Yeah. But when Henry passed away in 2017, his will left everything to his children from a previous marriage. Oh, wow. And that's where things get a little bit sticky. I bet. Two decades together and then nothing. That's got to be rough. Yeah. And to make matters even more complicated, a significant portion of Henry's estate was their shared home in Ajax. Okay. Valued at around half a million dollars. Wow. So it wasn't just about sentimental value. There were real financial stakes here, too. Okay. So Missing is in a situation here where, I mean, I'm assuming she's feeling like she was dealt a pretty bad hand after 20 years. Yeah. So did she just accept this? Yeah. Like, what were her legal options at that point? So this is where Ontario's Trustee Act comes into play. Okay. And this is an important one, I think for everyone listening to understand. Okay. This act sets out a very strict two-year limitation period okay. for filing certain types of claims against an estate. Okay. So you can think of this as a legal deadline. It exists to keep things moving, prevent these cases from dragging on for years, and that deadline, it's not flexible. So even though, so hold on. Even though Ms. Ingram had been with this man for nearly two decades because she didn't file a claim within two years. Right. The law basically says, like, too bad. Pretty much. That doesn't seem right. Well, it's not about what seems right or wrong, unfortunately. Yeah. It's about what the letter of the law says. Right. And that is what makes Ingram v. Kulinich so interesting. Okay. Okay, so two-year window. Did she miss it? She did. Okay. Mr. Kulinich passed away in February of 2017. Right. Mrs. Ingram didn't formally file her claim until 2021. Wow, four years later. Okay, so what was the what was the thinking there? Was that a miscalculation or did they have another angle? So this is where things get interesting. Okay. Her legal team actually argued that a different law applied in this situation. Okay. The Real Property Limitations Act. And oh, this wow. one this one has a, a much more generous 10-year time limit. Okay, I see where you're going with this because a big part of this estate 
was that house that they shared. They're saying it's not just a claim against the will, it's her rights to real estate. Right. Exactly. Okay. They argued that her claim wasn't subject to that stricter two-year deadline under the Trustee Act. Mm -hmm. And get this, the initial judge agreed with them. Uh, it looks like Mrs. Ingram might actually have a shot here, even though she was outside that initial two-year window. So at that point, it seemed like the court was saying, yeah, we get it. This was a long relationship. She deserves some claim to this property. In a way, yes. Well, okay. But this is this is a legal roller coaster, remember? Right. The case went to the Court of Appeal. Okay. And that's where things took a bit of a turn. Uh-oh. What happened at the Court of Appeal? They overturned the first ruling. Okay. They sided with a strict interpretation of the Trustee Act. Okay. And, you know, that's the thing about the law sometimes. It's not always about what feels fair right. or what feels right on a human level, you know? Right. The court essentially said that two years is two years no matter what, regardless of her relationship with Mr. Kulinich, regardless of the fact that real estate was involved. So even though there were arguments about, well, it was a house and she was with him for 20 years, the court of appeal was basically like, nope, the rules are the rules. Exactly. And and their reasoning, I think, is important. Okay. They emphasize that those statutory limitation periods that you see in the Trustee Act, okay. those aren't suggestions. Those are there to protect the entire integrity of the estate process. Right. We're talking about preventing these drawn-out legal battles. Right. We're talking about making sure that estates can be settled in a timely manner. Right. And frankly, just offering some closure to everybody that's involved. Yeah, because I can see how without those deadlines in place, it would just be a mess. Oh, absolutely. Like you would just have estates that are just in limbo for years and years. You'd have beneficiaries left in the lurch not knowing what they're entitled to. Right. Assets potentially losing value. Right. It would just be a legal nightmare. So these deadlines, while they might seem harsh, yeah. they exist for a reason right. to try to bring some order to what could be a very chaotic situation. So in, in Ms. Ingram's case, what the Court of Appeal decided it meant that it meant that despite their long relationship despite the fact that there was significant value in that shared property because her claim was filed outside of that two-year window that was it it was done wow so even if you think you might have a claim yeah those deadlines are those deadlines are crucial absolutely okay so what's the takeaway here for our listener because maybe they're thinking okay interesting legal case but this doesn't really apply to me what's the bigger picture I think this case highlights something that's really important for all of us. Okay. The law and our own personal sense of what's right, right. don't always line up, it's... especially when you're talking about matters of the heart right. and that sometimes waiting too long can have significant consequences. So what you're saying is it's not enough to just know the rules. You got you to gotta act on them. That's right. Before it's too late. Yeah. And I think this case is a real wake up call. Yeah. Because. All right. Well, until next time, everyone, keep those questions coming and we will be here to dive deep into the issues that matter to you.